Welcome to A-Frame Woodworking. Today we're going to build a small little jig for the bandsaw. And the purpose of this jig is to cut pen blanks for the slimline pens. The pen blanks can come in a variety of sizes. They're anywhere from 5 eighths of an inch thick by 5 eighths of an inch. Uh, you can mill your own 3 quarters of an inch to 3 quarters of an inch. But the problem is the tubes that get glued into here can be really small. Um, you're only going to cut these wood blank pieces to about two and a half inches. And to find a safe way to do that, you can use the bandsaw and keep your fingers on either side. But if you're going to do a production run or you're going to do a half a dozen as gifts for Christmas, uh, your fingers can tend to get a little too close to the blade. Doing this on a miter box, again, your fingers get really close to the blade. Um, and if you do them by hand, it's just going to take you a while to do them. I also teach middle school, and this was a jig I came up with at the school. I'm going to make one here for you in my shop so you can see the process from start to finish. It's really a simple jig to put together. Uh, jigs don't have to look fancy. We're going to be using some 3 quarter MDF that I've left over from another project. Uh, I have some rippings of birch that I checked. Uh, it's 3 quarters of an inch thick, so that should fit in your miter slot on your bandsaw just fine. And then this is a fairly lengthy piece of material, so from this, I'll be able to cut the material for both the guide and the fence. So essentially how this jig works is we're going to make a wooden uh, runner for the bottom and we're going to put a small fence on the top and we'll be able to when we get our pen blanks this is a piece of cherry with some sapwood showing may use this for a pen but it's about the right size and if you order anything from Rockler or Woodcraft or Penn State Industries you can get pen blanks that are already cut to length or to overall length for you and you just have to cut them down into size. So what this jig will do for us is once we get our pen blanks you can set this up for a series of different styles of pens. Um, for this one I'm going to set this up for the slim line. Your piece goes against the fence. I have a pencil mark on there for the proper length. Clamp it into place and we'll be able to run this through the bandsaw. Uh, really quick simple jig but I thought I'd show you how I get this done. Uh, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece of MDF. We're going to go over to the table saw and I'm going to cut this in about an uh, 8 by 8 square. Depending on your bandsaw or your needs, you can lengthen or shorten the jig. So let's get started. We'll head over to the bandsaw, or sorry, we'll head over to the table saw and we'll cut the top piece to the proper size. Here we are at the table saw. I set my fence up for 8 inches. I have my safety glasses and my ear protection. I also have one of my trusty push sticks that I like to use. I didn't, you don't need to, but this is something that I'm going to do another video and show you how I make my push sticks here in the shop. I, I get in the habit of using these even on wider boards. Um, I have this set to 8 inches and it's a piece of MDF so I'm going to be able to rip it and then I'll cross cut it to length and then we'll have our top piece. <laughs> Now that we have our base ripped, it's time to do the runners and the fence. What I've done is I have this piece of birch that's left over from another project. Uh, I'm going to make my runners and my fence 3 8 of an inch thick. And I have a mark right here on the end of a board at 3 8 Now the problem with that is in traditional thinking you want to have your finished product at 3 8 of an inch. If I take my fence and I move it to 3 8 of an inch, I can barely get there because it starts to get in the way of my guard. And I like to keep my guard on whenever possible. And I have a zero clearance insert in my table saw. And if you'd like more information on that, you can go ahead and get a hold of me and I'll uh, give you some instructions on doing that. If you have the normal plate in there, uh, you're going to have a really big gap between here and it'll be really hard to cut that. Uh, it's much better if you take this cut on the left side of the blade. So that's why I put this mark here. And again, we're building a jig and we don't really need it to look fancy. And if it's off by a 16th or a 32nd or even an eighth of an inch, we'll still be able to make this, but we wanna make sure we're doing it safely. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reposition this and we're gonna line this up so that this mark 
is on the left side of our blade and we're going to feed the remaining piece through. We have plenty of material and that's the safest way to do a thin cut like this. There's even ways to do repetitive cuts like this and that may be something I can show you in a future video as well. So let me go ahead and show you close up how I'm going to get this set up and then we'll go ahead and rip our strip for our runner and our fence. You can see the mark on the edge of my board. I'm going to keep this against the edge of the fence. I'm going to slide my board over. I'm going to line it up with the saw blade and I'm just going to tap the fence until it hits that outside tooth. Now again, that's really getting accurate for a simple fence like this, but it's just good practice to get into. So right there is my mark, and then I'm going to go ahead and lock this down. And now I've just set this. This way I can still keep my fence in place, and I'll still be able to make a thin rep. Now that we got the runners cut to their final width, I'm over at my miter saw stand. Uh, pretty easy way to get these to cut to size before we move on since it's right next to my table saw. We're going to cut them a little bit shorter than an 8 inch uh, piece. That's how big our base, our top plate is. I set up a stop block so I can just cut this twice and then go ahead and label this and you can come up with a bunch of other jigs for use of the runners. It's a good way to use up your scrap. Uh, and a good way to remember what they go for and then you get to see how these go right in. So let's get these things cut to length. We've moved over to the drill press. I just kind of going in sequence of my machines that are lined up. Uh, so here we are. I put a, a small bit in there just as a pilot screw. I'm using a number six screw here. I uh, would have liked to have a three quarter inch but all I had on hand was a one inch. Uh, jigs and fixtures, you're kind of at the mercy of what you have on hand. Don't be afraid to improvise with uh, whatever materials or parts or little scrap bins you have of screws left. It's a good time to use some of that stuff into a project that's going to be useful. Um, and the one inch will be fine. They're not going to come through the bottom of the MDF. What I did was I just put a couple marks, uh, evenly spaced about four screws in there. That'll put uh, four in the runners and four in the fence. And I'm going to come back. I have a countersink bit, so I'm going to come back and uh, countersink those a little bit, especially for the bottom runner. Uh, just to clean it up and keep those screw heads below the surface. So number six should be fine for you, depending on how thick you made your runner. I made mine a three-eighths of an inch. If you make them a little thicker, a little thinner, you may need to change the size of that. But I went with a number six, and then we'll be using a one inch. So we're just going to drill these holes and then drill the pilot holes. And then after that, we'll countersink them. If you've never used a countersink a bit before, there's a real easy way to see if you've gone far enough. This drill press is set up with a depth stop. Most are. Uh, some might be more accurate than others, but the quickest way to see if you have uh, the correct depth, depending on how far you want to countersink, simply flip the screw over, put it inside there, and if that's down below the surface, the tip of the or the top of the screw is down below, then your countersink is deep enough and you won't see the head of the screw. We're here at the bandsaw to get this thing all put together. I have my piece of MDF and then I also borrowed my 
miter gauge from the table saw. Uh, I have a factory edge back here. I'm gonna use that as my registration uh, just to help keep this thing as square as possible. It's a bandsaw blade so it does flex. So you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna actually raise up my upper blade guide assembly here just a little bit just to give you a little bit better vantage point of what's actually going on here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put my top plate against my miter gauge. And the reason why I'm doing that is I want to get this roughly registered with my blade. I don't really necessarily want this tight against my blade um, and I definitely don't want it flexing my blade to the left and I don't want it far, too far away. So we're actually going to build this thing upside down so this is going to become the bottom. and. I'm going to keep this tight against, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of my drafting triangles and looking down through it, I'm going to line it up with the miter gauge slot. Again, I'm just getting this close, and then we'll flip this over, and that'll just help keep everything square once we get this thing. So I'm doing the fence first, so I'm putting a line, and then I'm actually going to put an X on the right side of that. That's where my runner is going to be placed, and we're going to screw this down into place. So make sure you're going to take this back to the, now that I have it lined up here, I'm going to take it back to the workbench. We're going to pre-drill these and sink those screws in, and then I'll show you how I'll finish off the fence. Okay, we're back at the workbench. Got my X's for where the runner's going to go. I have my line over here to help me register that to keep it straight. I'm going to line that up. I put my pilot bit already in my cordless drill. And I'm going to start with the first one down here. Drill it. And I'm going to go ahead and switch bits right away. I'm going to go ahead and get that first one in place. Going into the MDF, you want to make sure you don't over tighten those. And I'm not using any glue or anything. I'm going to have four screws in the bottom here. That's plenty. And I'm going to go up to the top. Uh, it's pretty straightforward from here. And there you have it. Now to lay out the fence. This is the side of my jig that's going to be closest to the blade. And my fence is going to go across here. Now again, we're rough cutting these pen blanks. Uh, so if you don't get it perfectly 90 degrees, it's not the end of the world. I like to make sure everything I do is as close to perfect as I can get it. Uh, once you cut these, they're still gonna be oversized. The brass tube's gonna be in there. You're supposed to cut these so there's more material above or below this uh, on either side of the brass tube. Then you actually barrel trim it down to get it flush. Um, but I wanna get these as close as possible because I might use this jig for cross-cutting something else. So there's a couple things to consider. One, I want to try and make sure that my hands stay uh, far away from the blade. Um, the most expensive part of this project is finding a way to hold the material in place. Uh, a simple lever clamp like this will do. This happens to be one from Rockler. I use these a lot for different jigs in the shop, and I move them from jig to jig. They're anywhere from 10 to $20 depending on where you get them and if you can get them on sale. Uh, they really do a nice job of holding down. They're totally adjustable. There's many different types of these. I got this one from Rockler. Uh, I have some more inexpensive ones that I've got from Tool King. And you know, just keep your eyes open. Having a couple, half a dozen or a dozen of these around can really make jigs and fixtures uh, pay for themselves really quickly. So I wanna make sure that wherever I mount this, I want to make sure it's far enough away, um, but I need to stay within the range of where this is going to be clamped. Uh, the typical pen, you can also move this around on the jig as you do it. I know that two and a half inches is about what I need for a slimline pen. That's a really good starter pen. Um, so I'm somewhere in this region here, and I'll come back and mark that once we actually do a project. So I need my hold down to be over in this region somewhere. So just roughly lining this up, 
if I would mount this down in the bottom left hand corner and my material is about 5 eighths of an inch thick or so, I want that hold down to be putting pressure right down on my piece. So on this side, I'm just going to mark where I want this to go and I can move this lever clamp up or down, left or right, wherever I need it. But for now, we're going to start with it like that. Remember, these jigs and fixtures are meant to be used over and over again for a lot of different purposes. And, you know, it's just, it just takes a couple of minutes here in the shop to make a couple of these. So don't be afraid to move those lever clamps around, write on them, mark them, make it easy for you. So all I'm going to do is come in here. I know this is a, a good straight edge. And I'm just going to strike this and again come back with my X's so I remember where that's going to go. And then it's a matter of just doing the opposite that you did on the bottom. We're going to put our fence down in place here. And I also have some of the scrap uh, that we didn't use for a runner or the fence. And I'm going to put that down because you already have one piece underneath. And this is going to wobble if you don't have something underneath helping to keep it flat. So I'm going to do this on this side. And I'm just going to put the drill to use here. Drill my holes. Keep this as straight as I can. I could even come back with my fence, or sorry, with my uh, framing square. Keep that in place while I do it. Again, there's many different ways you can do woodworking. This is just one that I have found that works really well. And there you have it. Your fence for your pen blank crosscut jig. Next is lining this up. So now I'm going to come back and I'm going to remeasure that just so I know about where that needs to be. And again, I said it was about two and a half inches. And I'm going to come back and make sure with one of my pen blank pieces to make sure that this is going to register that rubber stopper right where I need it to be. And then once I have it located, I'm simply going to come back with my pencil. Again, it's just a couple of holes, and you can move those around and reposition them. Now I have my holes in place. These are a little bit smaller. These are three-quarter inch. I believe they're number eights for the hole down, so I just need to change to a bigger pilot hole. Here it pays to have a little bit longer Phillips bit or just use a screwdriver to get past the clamping mechanism. And I'm going to start these just to make sure my clamp's in place. I'm not going to run them tight until I get them all four holes. And there you have it. This is your crosscut jig for pen blanks and the next thing I would do is figure out where my first pen blank needs to be cut and then we'll take this over to the bandsaw and I'll show you how it works. Here we are at the bandsaw. I labeled this slimline. Again, if you're doing a bunch of different types of pens, which you'll probably get into, uh, you'll want to mark them. Here's a quick and easy way to cut your pens. I like to mark the grains so I keep them together. The key to this is remember this is the part you're keeping is your first uh, pen blank and then this is the second. So I'm going to go ahead and line that up with the line. It's just this simple. Go ahead and secure your clamp. You may need to do some adjusting here depending on the size of your material. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure I lower my upper blade guide because I want all of this to clear. And with this one, it has to be a little bit higher so I don't hit that adjustment. And that should be good. Bring this back. Start your saw. Keep your hands to the right. Stop the saw between. Unclamp. There's your first pen blank. Now the key is to slide this one back in here. Line it up with your mark. 
Clamp it down. And there you have it. Two pen blanks. You could sit here and cut these all day very safely. Uh, I think it's a great jig. Doesn't take long to build. Nice little addition to your shop. Plus it's great for cutting other small parts in other projects. So hopefully you enjoyed this episode on building a crosscut jig for your bandsaw. This one's specifically designed for cutting pen blanks. Thanks for watching. Uh, again, check us out again, aframewoodworking.com.